my name is Graydon Blair from Utah Biodiesel Supply and today we're going to make a batch of biodiesel from waste vegetable oil. First thing we're going to need to do is titrate this oil to see how much catalyst it's going to require. We're going to use potassium hydroxide as our catalyst today. We're then going to measure out 400 milliliters of oil, put it in here, mix out the appropriate methanol, mix in our catalyst, mix it all together, put it in the jar, shake it, and then we'll let it settle out and we'll have finished biodiesel. First thing we need to do today is titrate our oil. How we do this is very simple. We are going to measure out some oil, some isopropyl alcohol in a cup. Put a little bit of that in there. And then I have some titration solution pre-put together. It was one gram of potassium hydroxide to one liter of water. It's all mixed up and ready, so we're going to pour some of that out. and then we'll titrate. Before we titrate, it's important to wear some safety gear. I'm gonna wear safety gloves and I have some glasses on and we'll just get started. To do a titration is fairly simple. You put one milliliter of oil in a vial with 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. You add some phenolphthalein and then you start dropping in titration solution until this turns a pinkish color then we record what that is. We're going to do three titrations today. So with that, we'll pull a liter of oil, or a milliliter of oil out. Oil I'm going to titrate. There's a milliliter. Pull 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. Okay. These just have markings on the side. So we'll put that in. What we're going to do is shake this up and get it ready. And a little bit of phenolphthalein to it. One, two, three drops. And then we'll begin the actual titration. To do that, I take a syringe. Fill it up with 10 milliliters of titration solution. And slowly, the goal is to turn this pink. It almost turns pink on contact, so this oil is pretty darn good. You can see that that's turning really nice. Got a nice purple tint to it. Let it sit here for about 30 seconds and see if it stays that way. And we'll add just a touch more. Okay, so that's titration number one. And that came out at about one, two, three and a half milliliters. It's now time to do our other titrations, two more. I always like to do three titrations on used oil, and so I now have some oil, some alcohol, and some phenolphthalein in this mixed up. And I also did it in here. Again, one milliliter of oil, 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol, and two or three drops of phenolphthalein. So let's go ahead and titrate this one and see what it comes out at. So that's an easy average. We normally add the three together, divide by three, but I know this is going to equal three. So that's our titration. We'll put this over here. Now it's time to make biodiesel. Okay, our titration came out to three after our average. So three plus seven is equal to 11 grams per liter. We have 400 milliliters of oil that we're going to be working with today. And so to figure out how much catalyst we're going to use, we're going to do just some simple math. We know that 400 is basically 0.4 of one, uh, one liter, and so if you take 0.4 times it by 11, you'll get 4.4. So we're going to use 4.4 grams in this to make our biodiesel and our methanol. 
We're going to measure out 4.4 grams and put it in 80 milliliters of methanol. So I just have a scale here. I've teared it to zero. So I'm just going to start putting some on until I get to my 4.4. There we go. This and into the methanol it goes. It's going to take about five minutes for your catalyst to dissolve into your methanol. It might take a little bit more. And so we're just going to shake this up for a little bit. And once it's fully dissolved, we'll get ready to make the biodiesel. This is what the potassium hydroxide looks like as it's dissolving. It's just going to liquefy. I don't know if you can see that real well, but there's just a little bit of solid amounts of it left still on the bottom. While it's doing that, you can actually check the temperature of your oil. I've heated this up, and I am sitting at right about, about 135. When you're making it in larger equipment, you want to heat your oil up to about 130 to 135 degrees. You don't want to go over 145 because we don't want to start boiling the methanol off. My oil's ready, so in a minute, once this is ready, we'll make our biodiesel in this jar. With our catalyst dissolved, it's now time to make biodiesel. I like to use small mason jars because they're easy to pour into, we can seal them and we can shake it up. So I'm going to take the lid off of this, pour my oil in. Beautiful golden brown color. And I'm going to take my 80 milliliters of methanol and potassium hydroxide, put that in there, and cap it, and I'm going to shake it. As I begin shaking this, the color of this is going to change almost immediately, so I'll stop here a couple times to show you. We've just turned to this nice caramel looking color, and that's normal because that means the reaction is occurring. I can feel it in my hand getting warm too. As you put this in, a chemical reaction will start to occur as well. Notice I just went to kind of a more darkish caramel looking color. So I'm going to shake this for about five minutes and we'll be back in a moment. We've now shaken this for about five minutes and you'll notice that the color has just gone dark, dark, dark. That means the chemical reaction's gone on. This is biodiesel that was made from oil that was waste vegetable oil as well. And if you look close, you can actually see the separation layer that happened in this biodiesel. What you do is you let it sit for about eight to 10 hours and the glycerin will settle out off the bottom and you'll get this beautiful separation layer between these two. The stuff on the top is biodiesel and the stuff on the bottom is your glycerin. After you've removed your glycerin, it'll be important to wash the biodiesel. To do that, you're going to use some water and you're going to mist that water into the biodiesel and what you'll notice is on the bottom you'll go cloudy and what we're doing is we're actually removing the excess methanol, catalyst and lye from here that's still stuck in the biodiesel. Continue to wash until the water on the bottom goes clear like this. So the water on the bottom of this one is nice and clear and my biodiesel on top is still somewhat clear. Normally your biodiesel may not go as clear on top and that's okay. That just means that you need to dry the biodiesel so that the water now will come out of it. You can do that through bubbling or you can just leave the lid off and let it air dry. Most commonly though bubbling will help. Heat is also a friend to all of this process but we basically started with waste vegetable oil down here, mixed our chemicals, allowed it to settle. We got glycerin out of here, we removed the glycerin, we start to wash it. And then once it's finished washing, we dry it, and then we're ready to have the biodiesel to take and drive down the road. This is what finished bio looks like when it's done. So we now have the whole gamut of what biodiesel looks like when it's made. For Utah Biodiesel Supply, this has been making a small batch of biodiesel from waste vegetable oil. Thanks for watching. Stop on by our website at utahbio.com.